So now the tribe of Levi, brethren. The tribe of Levi, basically, we can see that they can be found primarily, which will be probably a surprise for some, but they can primarily be found in Wales and Wallonia, part of modern Belgium. But you also find them also in Pennsylvania, like steel mills and levitons, for example. Now, Jacob prophesied that Levites would be in the last days, that they would, as we read in Genesis 49, verses 5 through 7, that they would have instruments of cruelty in their habitations. And Jacob said further, O my soul, come not thou into the, their secret, unto their assembly, my honor be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they digged down a wall. They dig down a wall, which is also mentioned in Proverbs 25, verse 28. And Jacob continues, Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. So they were scattered in Israel in Numbers 35, verse 1 through 4. We can read something interesting about Levi's. We can read about their numbers. Numbers 35, verse 1. And the Lord spoke to Moses in the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho, saying, Command children of Israel that they, they give the Levites cities to dwell in from the inheritance of their possession. And you shall also give the Levites common land around the cities. They shall have the cities to dwell in, and their common land shall be for their cattle, for their herds, and for all their animals. The common land of the cities which you will give the Levites shall extend from the wall of the city outward a thousand cubits all around. And then in Joshua chapter 21, verses 1 through 4, we see how this was later indeed implemented. Now, other alternate readings of these verses are uh, verses we read in Genesis chapter 49, verse 5 through 7. O oh my soul, stay away from them. May I never be a party to their wicked plans, for in their anger they murdered a man and maimed or hamstrung oxen and maimed oxen just for fun. Or they also destroyed a town well. As we can read in the town well was one destruction was in Jerusalem. We can read about that in Lamentations. Now, how was this prophecy of Jacob brethren fulfilled in our times? And how it is being fulfilled in now in modern day Israel. Well, here is from the New Book of Knowledge, page 129, volume 2. Liege, the city of Liege in Wallonia, produces firearms. You see, instruments of cruelty in their habitations, brethren. Collier's Encyclopedia, volume 4. Large munition, munitions factories are concentrated at Herstal and Liege. The world's finest military rifle, the 381 caliber Springfield SAR-48, is an exact model of the Belgian-designed FALLIR rifle, one of the world's most time-honored battle rifles. Like the original FAL, the SAR-48 is a quality-built, combat-proven performer. Interesting enough, American Academic American Encyclopedia, Volumes 11, Walloons from present-day Belgium, who settled in the Bergslagen area of Sweden in the 1620s, are Swedish immigrants who came to Sweden to help in iron ore industry. And indeed, brethren, as Funk and Wagnalls also reveal to us, coal, which makes steel when added to iron, is the most valuable mineral resource in Wales. The refining of metal ore, much of which is imported, is the major manufacturing industry. Almost all the tin plate and much of the aluminium of the sheet steel produced in Britain is made in the Welsh plants. And coal mining, Academic American Encyclopedia tells us, and the manufacture of iron, steel and tin plate are important in Wales. Now, furthermore, brethren, Belgium's principal manufacturers are iron and steel. And the leading products of the metallurgical industry are iron and steel. And in 1975, Belgium ranked fifth in Europe back in those days in this industry. And even though they are scattered 
it is reported that they are somewhat reluctant to marry outside of their own, outside their own tribes. It's speaking of Walloons in Sweden, the ones I've just read you about in the book *The Nordic, the Incredible Nordic Origin* by Gaston Olson, page 127. Also, among the purest genetically isolated North Americans, in a most restricted recent sense, are those with ancestral Welsh surnames: Jones, Lewis, Owens. This is revealed to us in Encyclopedia Britannica. And we could also add the names Levi, Levy, Levin to the above list. Two great American music talents, Lawrence Welk and Tom Jones, they're both Welsh. And it is in one of the books about Welsh, it says it is remar certainly remarkable to see the number of individuals with profoundly artistic tendencies, especially music talent, among the descendants of the Walloons. It is hardly a coincidence, but rather a result of the practical and musical talent of the Walloons that the majority of their men of distinction have devoted themselves either to music or to a career in the medical profession or as an official. Now, interestingly, as you know, Levites were the musicians in Israel. But also we read in Jacob's prophecy about the anger, wrath and cruelty, and indeed anger, wrath and cruelty are indeed part of the Welsh and Walloon temperament. Because Welsh people are philosophically oriented and they enjoy working in small groups. They do may not make friends indiscriminately and once a friendship is formed, it usually lasts a lifetime. Keeping one's word is extremely important to the Welsh. Once an agreement is made, it is kept. We read about this in Culture Graham Wales in 1986. The same publication speaks about Walloons. Walloons have a reputation of being spontaneous, quick-witted and often caustic or sarcastic or skeptical as well as stubborn and headstrong. Yes, the stubborn, stiff neck house of Israel. So, there is an unbroken oral tradition regarding the identity of the descendants of Levi, of the Levites and the priests within the tribe of Levi. Those priests, Kohanim and Levites, have certain privileges in the synagogue ritual since as being the first to be called upon to read the Torah and the ones who blessed the congregation at the end of the service. Now, of course, you remember, brethren, this was the case that the Levites were to bless the children of Israel in Numbers chapter 6, verse 23 through 26, when it says that Moses and Aaron, and of course the Levites, they will be blessing the children of Israel. May God bless you and protect you. May God lift his face and let his face shine upon you and give you peace. You know, that's the pivotal uh, blessing the pivotal prophecy or the pivotal passage in the Bible about the blessings indeed now the national there was the national estefold of Wales is basically a competition in poetry drama and music that one brethren dates from the 7th century interestingly enough the Druids who are also represented in, in, in Wales in Wales, among the Welsh people, they also parallel the Levites in many ways and may, in fact, be their descendants. It is clear, you know, from the musical talent, the inclination to keep one's word and the philosophic orientation of Welsh and Walloons, that they are appropriately named by Leah, their mother. In Genesis 29, verse 34, Leah bore a third son and said, Now, this time, will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi, which means, brethren, joined or attached. Joined or attached. Now, Julius Caesar, he conquered the Belgians uh, and the Belga Belgae in 57 before Christ. And he wrote commentaries on the Gallic Wars. Uh, those commentaries have been translated into Serbian language, in which he describes them as the most warlike of all Gallic people. We find traces of will of Levi's among the Belgians and among the Welsh. For example, an ancient river in the Belgian area was called the Waal River. And this branch of the Rhine in Belgium today is still called the Waal, W-A-A-L River. We also see in Belgium Leuwen and La Lovière, Vilvorde, Nivelle, Vlanderland, 
those are names of cities and provinces in Belgium, which of course, you know, uh, contain uh, the sound of Levi. So th these names sound like a lot like Levi as does, for example, in Wales, Colwyn Bay, Amlovich, Claydewood, Edvelle, Holywell, and there's also a place which doesn't sound so much Levi, but obviously has a Levi influence. It's called Liverpool. What did Moses prophesy about the tribe of Levi? Well, we find that in Deuteronomy 33, verses 8 through 11. Deuteronomy 33, verse 8. Let thy Tumim and thy Ur Urim be with the Holy One, whom thou didst prove at Mas Massa, and with whom thou didst strive at the waters of Meribah, who said unto his father and his mother, I have not seen him, neither did he acknowledge his brethren, nor knew his own children, for they have observed thy word and kept thy covenant. They shall teach Jacob thine judgment, and Israel thy law. They shall put incense before thee, and whole burnt sacrifice upon thine altar. Blessed, bless Lord his substance, and accept the work of his hands. Smite though the loins of them who rise against him, and of them who hate him, that they rise not again. So this is the prophecy of Moses. And because of the Levite's zeal, zealous anger in a righteous cause, they redeemed themselves. They were very zealous with Moses in, back in Exodus chapter 25. When they gathered around Moses and executed his order. Exodus chapter 25. In verse 25 we read. You shall make for it a frame of a hand breadth all around, and you shall make a gold molding for the frame all around, and you shall make it for four rings of gold and put the, the ring on the four corners of this is the table for the show bread at four legs. So this description goes all the way up to you know verse twenty nine. And therefore because you know because they were very zealous in the righteous cause in righteous cause they were redeemed and rewarded rewarded by god in deuteronomy chapter 10 we read about this reward and in verse 8 deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 8 says at the time at that time the lord separated the tribe of levi to bear the ark of the covenant of the lord to stand before the lord to minister to him and to bless his name to this day and we find basically the same in the, at the end of the Old Testament, in the book of Malachi, we find this reward as well, brethren. Malachi chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Then you shall know that I have sent this commandment to you, that my covenant with Levi may continue, says the Lord of hosts. My covenant was with him, one of life and peace, and I gave them to him that he might fear me. So he feared me and was reverent before my name. So that was why they were rewarded by God, because of their, you know, zealous zeal in the righteous cause. And then again, we read in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 18, that neither shall the priests, the Levites, want a man before me to offer burnt offerings, and the kindle meal offerings and to do sacrifice continually. We find basically the same description in Ezekiel chapter 44 verse 15. In Deuteronomy 10 verse 9 it says, The eternal is his inheritance. Now in time this was fulfilled in the right to bear the Ark of the Covenant and care for the items in the tabernacle. So priests of Aaron brethren offered sacrifices. So this was in time, you know, fulfilled in ancient Israel. Now these scriptures, in figurative sense, imply that modern clergymen and priests and rabbis will have a large percentage of Levites within their ranks. Uh, Judah of Kerioth, the one who betrayed Christ, was probably a Levite since Kerioth is a city of refuge. It's mentioned in Joshua 20, verse 7 and 8. There were several cities of refuge, and like Shechem, Kedesh, 
Kiryat Arba, modern Hebron, Eburon as Bezer, Ramoth, Golan. Now, interestingly enough, that the Benjamites, just as a passing comment, also have been unusually prolific in Christianity. You find them that they were there to help the to be another to be the light as another tribe that was left to Judah in First Kings eleven and thirty four. In Malachi chapter five verse fourteen, we find that they're also to be the light to the world. And eleven of the twelve apostles, the original apostles, were Benjamites because they lived in Galilee. Paul was also a Benjamite. Yes, he was of the Jewish, you know, of Judaism. Before he was converted, he was of the uh, Jewish faith, but nevertheless, he was Benjamite, as he writes to, uh, you know, in to the book of Philippians. So that's about the Levites. Their brethren basically found in Wallonia, and they're found in Wales today. Anciently, there were some other traces there about Levi. For example, the ancient inhabitants of Gallia Transpandana were called Levi. And also there was a province in, of Armenia Minor, which was called Laviana. Also, Lamprier's classical dictionary tells us that the Druidai, Druids, the ministers of religion among the ancient Gauls and Britons, their name is derived from the Greek word an oak. And interestingly enough that a book, One Man's Destiny, page 289, says the Druids were the true religion. Well, obviously they were not, they were pagans, but nevertheless they were certainly descendants, obviously, of those who were supposed to practice true religion. So hopefully now, brethren, as we understand the Bible prophecy, we're coming to see, as I said, how in our day and age, in these last days, the prophecies of Jacob are being fulfilled. They are, when it comes to Levi, they're basically fulfilled, certainly, in Wallonia, the uh, part of Belgium, and also in Wales.